good morning all of you hello friends can you hear my son can you hear me how was i with you sir yes just oh. just just okay okay just a minute i have to make some settings yeah no strong scan easily into so shall we start the lecture shuru kare sir स्क्रीन दिसते का हो दिसते ओके ओके काही काही प्रॉब्लेम नाही ना सुरू करू मग ओके टुडे इज टॉपिक फ्रॉम आवर पेपर प्लांट फिजिओलॉजी इज वॉटर एब्झॉर्प्शन चॅप्टर ऑन वॉटर एब्झॉर्प्शन इन प्लांट्स अँड फ्रॉम दॅट चॅप्टर द फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज role of water in plants or importance of water in plants what is the importance of water to the plant body now when you study origin of life then you see that the first life itself originated in water so water is very essential for life and uh, without water life is not possible life is impossible in absence of Uh, water and therefore that is the reason why water is called as the elixir of life or liquid of life yala amrut apan mantu so it is very important for uh, the life or living organism and you know that plants are living organisms and therefore water is also essential water is also important for the plant life it is necessary for plant life and if you see of all the requirements of plant life the major requirement is that of water water is present throughout the plant body it is present inside the cell it is present in between the cell and it is present throughout the plant body so that is absolute necessity for plant life and the importance of water and the role of water or the role of water to the plant can be summarized in some of the points which we will uh, see one by one so see first point is constituent of protoplasm cell protoplasm Now, what is protoplasm the protoplasm is cell without cell wall whatever is present inside the cell wall it is called as protoplasm the cell has two parts outer non living part is called as the cell wall and the inner living part is known as the protoplasm and this protoplasm consists of water about 95 to 96% or uh, or weight of protoplasm is made of water so it is absolutely necessary in absence of water the protoplasm may becomes inactive or it may be killed therefore water is absolutely essential inside the protoplasm and you know there are many cytoplasmic organelles present inside the cell protoplasm like uh, your chloroplast mitochondria ribosomes endoplasmic reticulum all these cytoplasmic organelles lose their structure and function in absence of water if there is no water then they will lose their structure and function so water is very essential for maintaining the vitality or livingness of the protoplasm of the cell second is organic substances now there are different organic substances inside the plant like carbohydrates proteins nucleic acids vitamins enzymes so all these organic substances maintain their physical and chemical properties only in presence of water if there is no water then these organic substances will lose their physical and chemical properties so that is another importance of water inside the plant body that is the role of water in plants next importance of water in plants is regarding or in case of metabolic processes now what is metabolism now you see uh, one uh, you, you must be familiar with uh, one equation 
six CO2 plus 12 H2O in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll pigment gives rise to C6H12O6 plus 6H2O plus 6O2. And this is the equation of this is the equation of photosynthesis, famous unique process by which the plants can prepare food material. They are having this unique capacity or ability. Only plants can prepare food material. Only they can synthesize or only they can convert radiant energy, sun energy into food energy. So this is the anabolic process. The process of photosynthesis in general is called as anabolism because in this process, from simple inorganic substances like carbon dioxide and water, complex organic substances, that is food material, sugar is produced, energy is converted into food, sun energy is converted into food energy, complex substances. So this process of formation of complex substances from simple inorganic substances is called as anabolic process, constructive process. Whereas the opposite of that, there is one more equation that is C6H12O6 plus 6O2 gives rise to 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus some energy. This is the equation for another process, respiration, uptake of oxygen and release of carbon dioxide. This is example of respiration. This is the equation for respiration. So then in this process, there is conversion of complex organic substances like C6H12O6 into simple inorganic substances. This conversion of complex organic substances into simple inorganic substances with the release of energy is called as destructive process. Now it is not actually destructive, but it is opposite of constructive. So this is called as catabolic process, catabolism. Photosynthesis is an example of anabolism, constructive process. Respiration is an example of catabolism, destructive process. So when these two processes are combined together, anabolism plus catabolism, it is called as metabolism, you can see here. So this is an example of metabolism. This is one example of carbon metabolism, which takes place inside the plant body. So this is this all these processes, all these vital processes, all these living processes, which are going on inside the plant body, these are studied under this science, which is called as plant physiology. Plant physiology is the, is the study of plant processes, biochemical reactions, plant functions, which are going on inside the plant body, like photosynthesis, respiration, photorespiration, water absorption, salt absorption, then uh, plant growth and development, photoperiodism, vernalization, different processes are there, which are going on inside the plant body in living plants. And the study of all these processes is called as plant physiology. So this is a study of metabolic processes called as plant physiology. And for the functioning of this metabolic processes, you see here, there is importance of water or a role of water. Because in, when, when you see the equation for photosynthesis, there is gain of water as well as loss of water in this equation. So there is involvement of water in the process of photosynthesis. Again, in the process of respiration, there is release of water. So water is again involved in the respiration process. Now all metabolic processes in all biochemical, most of the biochemical reactions, what there is involvement of water. And if water is not there, then all these uh, biochemical reactions will going to stop. And therefore it will be uh, uh, not, uh, uh, you, can, you can say the plant can become non-vital or dead in that case. Cases, therefore, water is absolutely essential for the functioning of all these metabolic processes. Okay, in case of photosynthesis, as I told the equation, uh, water, uh, there, is a, there is demand for hydrogen for the reduction of carbon dioxide in this process. And for that reduction of carbon, hydrogen is coming from the water molecules. So water acts as a source of hydrogen atom for the reduction of carbon dioxide in the process of photosynthesis. So there is need of water in photosynthesis process. Again, it is observed that during the process of respiration, the rate of respiration increases in presence of water. And this increase in respiration rate, increased respiration rate is called as climateric rise. And this is observed, especially in case of uh, germinating seeds or uh, ripening fruits, fruit ripening processes. 
seed germination processes. There is a climatic rise and that is due to presence of water. If there is no water, there will be very slow rate of respiration uh, and therefore seed germination and fruit ripening processes will also get uh, inhibited. Okay, you know that water is called as universal solvent because uh, this is the liquid in which most of the substances get dissolved. So this is very useful property for the living organisms like plant also because water can form the medium in which many biochemical reactions as just now we have seen photosynthesis, respiration, all these biochemical reactions, metabolic reactions can take place only in presence of water. So water forms a medium in which all these reactions take place. If there is no water, then these reactions will not occur inside the plant body. So it forms a medium. The water also forms a medium for the different substances uh, to get dissolved in them, like uh, uh, organic substances, food material, some inorganic substances like minerals or some gases like carbon dioxide, oxygen, all these get dissolved inside the water and they, therefore they can get transported inside the plant body from one place to other place. So water forms agency through which all these substances can move from one place to other, other place and therefore it acts as a solvent in this case. Cell turgidity. Now uh, in the last lecture we studied what is turgidity, what is flaccidity and this property of cell turgidity, water which is present inside the cell cytoplasm and especially inside the vacuole, which are present at the very center of the cell, due to presence of water inside the vacuole, the cell becomes turgid. And this turgidity of cell is absolutely necessary for maintaining the vitality of the cell. If the cell becomes flaccid, then it will get uh, plasmalized, it will get killed. Therefore, cell turgidity is necessary for plant cell and this cell turgidity is possible only with the presence of water inside the cell. Okay, water is also present in the intercellular spaces. There is a thin network of uh, water uh, inside, the, uh, inside and in between the cells through which there is a movement of uh, different substances inside the cell and outside the cell. So if water is not uh, there, this uh, would have not been possible for the movement of substances inside and outside the cell. And this can happen only because there is presence of water in, in between two cells that is called as intercellular spaces. Well, water acts as a dispersal agent, disseminating agent. For example, in case of lower plants like cryptogams, the uh, spores or the gametes, they can move from one place to other place only in presence of water. So that is another importance of water to plant. Or in case of higher plants, uh, you must have studied in, in case of some plants, there is a dispersal of fruits and seeds through the agency of water. So in that case also, water acts as disseminating agent or dispersal agent. It acts as a carrier to carry many substances and dissolved in that, that we have studied. It also forms the uh, protective structure for the aquatic plants. Well, another, importance of water, probably the last one is in thermal regulation. This phenomenon is observed especially in tropical plants. Uh, in these plants, most of the water or about 65% of the water absorbed is lost from the plant body to maintain the optimum temperature. And this is called as thermal regulation. Otherwise, otherwise these plants will uh, would get uh, killed due to uh, severe heat and to avoid that, to resist that, this water, 65% of water is lost from the plant body and therefore that much amount is also absorbed from the soil to maintain uh, the optimum temperature and this is called as thermal regulation. So these are some of the important uh, points regarding role of water. We'll summarize constituent of protoplasm, different organic substances losing their physical and chemical properties, then a uh, role of water in metabolism like photosynthesis, respiration, carbon metabolism. There are also different metabolism like nitrogen metabolism, fat metabolism. Different processes are there in plants, photosynthesis, respiration, photorespiration, ascent of sap, 
then uh, your uh, transpiration all these processes we are going to study so we have studied importance of water to plant for the process of photosynthesis respiration acting as an universal solvent it is required for cell turgidity intercellular spaces water present in the intercellular spaces is also important for plant cells dispersal agent or disseminating agent and for maintaining thermal regulation so these are some of the roles that are played by water for the living organisms like plant okay there is one more phenomenon called as imbibition or imbibition uh, actually this you have studied last year uh, it is not in your syllabus for this year but uh, for understanding the process of water absorption actual mechanism of water absorption this phenomenon are important and therefore i am emphasizing on this phenomenon in the last lecture we studied about diffusion osmosis which are physical processes physical phenomenon likewise imbibition is another simple physical process in plant uh, which involves absorption as well as adsorption of water which involves uptake of water inside the plant body now you may you must uh, have seen the example when some seeds proteinaceous seeds gram seeds are soaked in water and kept overnight then uh, there is uh, absorption of water and there is subsequent uh, swelling of the colloidal material which is present inside the seed, inside these seeds here the colloidal material is proteins so these proteins which are present inside the seeds they absorb water they add soft water they become sw swollen and subsequently there is increase in the volume of seeds this process is called as imbibition now this is simply taking in of water and consequent swelling of colloidal materials colloidal material can be proteins or it can be starch it can be cellulose or it can be lignin it can be gum it can be gelatin any material or different types of colloidal materials are present in the solids substances which are present inside the plant body and these colloidal materials which are present inside the solid they absorb liquid and this process is called as imbibition that is uptake of liquids by solid particles or solid substances but without forming solution if they are forming solution then that is process of diffusion here there is absorption of liquids by solid without forming solution and this process is called as imbibition or imbibition so when we consider imbibition there is an involvement of two substances solid substance and liquid substance the solid which absorb liquid or which absorb water is called as imbibent and the liquid which gets absorbed inside the solid is known as the substance imbibed so here there is always capacity of gel or any other colloidal substance of the imbibent to absorb a large amount of water or liquid and that process is called as imbibition now different organic substances are having different imbibition capacity for example take the example of some uh, seeds dry seeds proteinaceous seeds are soaked in water then some wheat seeds are soaked in water then some cotton is soaked in water in three different dishes then what will happen the gram seeds will get uh, more amount of water by process of absor imbibition absorption and adsorption as compared to the wheat seeds and cotton because the proteins which are present inside these gram seeds they are having more imbibition capacity than the wheat seeds which consist of starch or uh, rice uh, which consist of starch so proteins are having more capacity than starch and the starch is having more capacity than the cellulose which is present inside the cotton therefore the cotton will get cotton will also show the process of imbibition but its imbibition capacity is very less as compared to these two proteins are having maximum capacity then uh, your starch is having intermediate capacity and the cellulose inside the cotton is having very less capacity of imbibition so different organic substances show different imbibition capacity now again it is dependent on the degree of cohesion cohesion means the force of attraction between similar molecules 
and therefore uh, uh, you must have seen during rainy season there is swelling of uh, doors wooden doors wooden windows uh, due to absorption of water and this happens because the wood which is made up of lignin that lignin has a high amount of imbibition capacity because lignin molecules or wood molecules are uh, having more of cohesive force than gelatin and therefore they show more imbibition property now there is one more point that uh, two conditions seem to be two conditions are seem to be two conditions seem to be favorable for the process of imbibition to occur and these are dpg diffusion pressure gradient which is also called as water potential gradient gradient means a type of slope uh, you see we have seen the process of diffusion that is diffusion takes place from the region of uh, you say higher concentration to lower concentration if here concentration is 10 unit and here concentration is 0 unit there is uh, there is a decreasing order like 10 9 8 7 so this difference in concentration per unit distance is called as diffusion pressure gradient difference in concentration per unit distance is known as diffusion pressure gradient which is highest at the at the starting point uh, at the um, position where there is very high concentration uh, so this is diffusion pressure gradient and the second one is affinity so in the first condition that means there must be diffusion pressure gradient which is existing between an imbibent and the substance imbibed and as far as uh, that uh, diffusion pressure gradient is existing the process of imbibition will take place and when this diffusion pressure gradient get vanished then the process of imbibition will stop and that is the reason when some dry seeds when the seeds are dry uh, they develop uh, very high there is development of very deep diffusion pressure gradient and therefore they absorb water by imbibition if the seeds are already wet uh, if they are already dissolved in water then they will show very less amount of imbibition due to absence of this diffusion pressure gradient now second fact is affinity there must be affinity there must be some affinity between imbibent and the substance imbibed for example when we when we keep dry seeds in water these dry seeds absorb water by imbibition because there is a sort of affinity attraction between the proteinaceous molecules of these dry seeds and water but when we dissolve the same dry seeds in ether solution then they will not show the process of imbibition because there is no affinity between seeds and ether but similarly at the same time when the rubber molecules or when uh, your uh, rubber is uh, dipped in ether solution it will show the process of imbibition because rubber is having affinity with the ether but when the same rubber is kept in water it will not show the process of imbibition because there is no affinity between rubber molecules and the water molecules so affinity should be there so that the process of imbibition takes place now when uh, the dry seeds are kept in uh, water then they develop uh, pressure and that pressure is called as imbibition pressure and this is the maximum pressure when some dry seeds are kept in water and due to this pressure they absorb water by process of imbibition and in the uh, in, in the last lecture we studied that dpd diffusion pressure deficit dpd is equal to mm, op minus ip osmotic pressure minus uh, what dpd is equal to op minus tp sorry turgor pressure so here dpd is equal to ip minus tp then uh, what is the importance of this process imbibition in plants is that it is uh, the first step in the water absorption that we are going to study when we study uh, mechanism or the process of water absorption actually then we will see that and it is also in seed germination now we are running short of time therefore therefore i will wind up and uh, the mechanism of water absorption that we will see in the next lecture these are some of the references okay okay if you have any questions then i will take it okay any questions 
Any question? Any query? Unmute Karani, question with Chara. Pimpre, any question? Vishal, is there? Vishal? Let me see how many participants are there. Did you understand what I talked? Sir, would the question get it? Salil? I'll study for it. Ha, that's a karami YouTuber Pantakna Rev to me Parati da Paha. तुम चाहे कहीं क्वेश्चन सासे उदय सांगा व्हाट्सएप और सांगा हम्म कहे अनुवर चेक एचएनसी एचएनसी मींस इनिबिटेड इनिबिटेड मींस तो मज्जा उकर तो यू देते नहीं इट रेजिस्ट दैट इज एचएनसी इनिबिटेड ओके Okay, shall I close the meeting? Hello? Okay. Okay, 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 bye. Thank you, thank you.